I have a long and varied history with Phuket Word. From the very first time that I debunked him. But the high and low tides are occurring four times a day with the moon going overhead just once a day in any given location. Right, let's think about this logically, shall we? Rather than just assume the widely accepted scientific theory is wrong. The moon takes 28 days to orbit us, so it's clear that the Earth is rotating faster than the moon is orbiting us. If you are stood at a certain point, for example, when there is a high tide, then the moon's gravitational pull is causing that high tide. Six hours later, the Earth has rotated a quarter of a turn, so to speak, and therefore you are now standing in a spot that is a low tide. To the time that he thought the dome was liquid helium. And I just wonder if uh, that's what eventually happens when we get up high enough, is that uh, we enter into this liquid layer. Either way, he still remains a staunch Flat Earth supporter. So it's high time that we revisited him, where today he's modelling a sun and a moon above a Flat Earth. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of this week's Flat Earth Friday, Babbel. This year, as many of you know, and as many times as I've said it, I'm running a multi-stage ultramarathon in Fuerteventura, so I really need to brush up on my Spanish. I'm getting there. Now Babbel is the best language app to help me and I'll tell you why. They teach real world practical conversations that you would actually use. And their lessons are designed by real language teachers, no algorithms or AI. The lessons are short, 10 minutes or so, and very interactive. And for me, most importantly, Babbel teaches more than just the vocab words. It teaches you about the language culture, history, people, and more. Soy de Alemania. Uh, that's, I am from Germany. Ellos son de Italia. They are from Italy. De donde eres? De donde eres? Where are you from? Easy. Start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel. Click the link in the description and get 65% off a subscription. And Babbel now offers a 20 day money back guarantee. Right, back to today's video where Phuket Word is looking to model the sun, earth and moon with his kid. Away we go. All right, okay, zoom in. Let's try and hold it steady. All right, so. You forgot to say your yeah, line. Okay. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. We're looking at the daytime moon. Well, it's early morning. Well, out of focus, but it sounds like your kid's doing the camera work, so we'll let him off here in Phuket, so uh, as Aidan here, who's holding the camera, zooms out, we'll see that the moon is, yeah, keep on going all the way out, setting in the west, over there. Okay, so we have a full moon, and it's, so it's been a full moon all night, and now the moon is going off to the west and setting. So what we're gonna do now is turn around, and face the opposite direction and you can see that we have a sunrise now I don't just coming up I'm not gonna okay. go too far that's so I don't right. blind him that's all right yeah, yeah yeah sensible lad although I fear he's been tainted already with the flat earth brush so uh, what we have is the sun and the moon completely opposite to each other so uh, it's just one of those things to show uh, that we have a full moon when the sun and moon are pretty much opposite to each other. Yes, indeed. This is why the face of the moon is fully illuminated. Please continue. Now, last night, the, the, uh, so I'm facing east now, aren't I, with the sun rising, but last night the moon rose uh, somewhere over, oh, where are we? Over there. Okay, so if that's east, that's going to be north, and that's going to be west over there where the, the moon's setting. Can you zoom in on it again? All right, okay. So that's the thing, you know, the moon, there's so two, two things happen throughout the month, don't they? Sorry. And you can, you can perceive this on a heliocentric model, 
or you can perceive it on uh, or happening above a flat earth if you like where the sun and the moon are doing circles overhead um, no, you cannot perceive this on a flat earth. It doesn't work. Flat earthers have tried time and time again to make it work, but they keep getting debunked. Uh, the moon does a steady circuit, uh, going around at a steady pace. So let's say the, the moon does 28 laps per month. So each lap is one day long. All right, and we see the moon go overhead once a day. The problem with that, of course, is that the moon would appear in exactly the same position each night of the year, which, of course, it doesn't. Uh, but uh, what happens is we have the sun doing a circle. Let's go, let's go back round to the sun, doing its circle, rising and setting for us in any given location once a day. But... Uh, in those 28 days, in those 28 laps that the moon does, the sun will at some point overtake the moon and lap the moon. And so that's when we get a new moon, when the, when the sun and the moon are together. So is the moon behind the sun or in front of it? Because if it's behind the sun, then fine. But what happens when there's an eclipse? What makes the moon suddenly jump in front of the sun rather than pass behind it? So over the month from now on, uh, what we have now is the sun and the moon directly opposite each other. So what will happen now is uh, the sun will get closer and closer to the moon over the course of the next two weeks. And uh, then we'll get a new moon where we don't see the moon anymore because the sun and the moon are pretty much coming up at around in around the same place and that would be because the moon is at a point in its orbit where it passes between us and the sun and we can explain the eclipse not eclipse thing quite well the moon's orbit is tilted five degrees so most of the time it doesn't get in the sun's way but every now and again we get an eclipse and so then after that we get uh, the crescent moon the waxing until we get a full moon again one month from now and the uh, the moon and the sun are almost opposite each other I say almost because as I said the sun the sun's coming up over here but uh, the moon is coming up the other side so over there yeah mm -hmm. all right well, that's it really that's it that's all you wanted to tell us don't worry everyone he's about to do some modeling for us we can look at these and we can we can make predictions about what's going to happen we can make predictions about what's going to happen. Flat earthers can't with that model. Uh, but that doesn't predetermine a model. What it, what it does is allow you to create all kinds of models and make all kinds of predictions uh, and uh, make associations as well. But uh, what we see, for example, the sun and the moon opposite each other, does it mean that the moon is reflecting sunlight? Well, it is. We already know that. You don't need to investigate that one, matey. Not oh, necessarily. No. <laughs> we can uh, perceive that that's what's happening, but then if we look at the nature of reflections, then uh, it, the moon doesn't appear to be reflecting sunlight. The nature of reflections. <laughs> Let me guess. This solid metal ball doesn't reflect light exactly the same the way that the moon does, therefore the moon doesn't reflect light. Poor, poor form, because I guarantee you that's the argument. So let's just whiz it back to the moon now. Okay, see if you can zoom in on the, oh, there you go, zooming in oh, on, oh, sorry, zoom sorry. maybe zoom out a bit, yeah, there we go, right, oh. keep it steady, there you go, oh. oh, all right, so there's our daytime moon, which is now setting opposite the sun, okay, so let's just model what we are seeing uh, happening above a level earth. So the table is our level earth and we've got a cut out uh, by Aiden of the sun here and the moon here, okay? Okay, well yes, and I assume in your world the moon and the sun are the same size. 
Are they 2D or are they 3D though? Yeah, yeah. All right, you don't need to be going back and forth. Just keep it steady like that, yeah? So that's just basically representing what we're seeing now with the, with the sun coming up over there. You can just, okay, the sun's coming up over there as we saw just now, and the moon is opposite. Okay, keep it on the table now. So that's what we're seeing. So let's say this bottle top is, is us here in Phuket. Let's just put us on this blue square here. So this is what we're seeing. So throughout the day, uh, what we have now is that is the moon is, is setting now for us. Okay, they're doing, they're doing circuits, okay? The sun's rising, the moon's setting. You need to define setting because if they are doing laps above us, then why aren't we seeing the moon and the sun, or especially the sun, all the time? Even if you come up with some silly optical physics to explain why we're not seeing the disk of the sun anymore, we surely would still be seeing the influence of its light. It would be, at the very least, dusk or dawn all through the night. But in reality, it's not. So what we're talking about is the sun and the moon doing daily laps in an orbit above the level earth like that, okay? Daily laps. I wonder what sort of speed they'd need to be doing in order to do that daily. Well, the flat earth map must have at least a radius of 12,000 kilometers. You can't argue with the size of countries. Now that means even if the sun was doing these laps at the equator, it would have a circumference or orbit over the flat earth, if you will, of around 37,000 kilometers. Now, if it's doing that per day, that would be a speed of around 1,500 kilometers per hour. Yet, when the sun is above us, and especially if it was as close as you say it is, then it doesn't appear to be moving that fast at all, does it? So we're talking about one month being 28 laps. So at the moment, we are, um, you could say we're halfway through the month, or it could be the beginning of the month with a full moon. It, it doesn't really matter. But what we have is the sun and the moon opposite each other. So as they continue to do their daily laps, so, you know, we're told in the heliocentric model that the moon is lapping the Earth only once every month. But uh, no, what, what's happening is the moon appears to be going overhead as well as the sun every single day. Yes, Phuket word. That is because we rotate once a day. Now, is the, is the moon a rock? Is it a reflection of the sun? Is it some kind of projection? We don't know. Oh, we don't know what it is, but it's definitely hovering above a flat Earth. But there is, uh, there is this correlation. Okay, so uh, what, what's actually happening is, is the moon is doing a... Let's just do one thing at a time. The moon is doing a steady pace. Okay, that's one lap per day. Okay, and the sun is doing a slightly faster pace, one lap a day. So as you've got these two things uh, doing this, again, this is apparent. I'm not saying that the moon is a physical object actually moving. It's just, it, it could be down to all sorts of reasons, but sorry, let's go to where we were today. What's gonna happen is uh, as time goes by, the sun going slightly faster than the moon is going to catch up. And so uh, what we'll have uh, in another few couple of weeks is the sun and the moon in a very similar place in the sky. So we'll see the sun, but we don't see the moon. Waiting for an explanation on eclipses imminently. Now this could mean that actually the sun is closer to the earth than the moon. Oh, it could mean this, or it could mean that. Nothing ever concrete with flat earthers, is it? Of course, we're told that the, the moon is close and the sun is millions of miles away, but they appear to be the same size to us. And the fact is that when we, uh, when we have a new moon, we don't see the moon. But it is there, again, due to this five degree tilt in orbit. We just see the sun. And uh, so as they begin to, they carry on doing their circuits, we then start to see another daytime moon again as the sun uh, inc gets faster and increases the gap between the sun and the moon. And then we have these, the waxing phases of the moon. We have a sliver of a crescent and that becomes a greater crescent. Then we've got a, a half moon. So somewhere around this point where they're doing a few laps and uh, the sun has got further away from the moon, then uh, we see uh, a half moon. Okay, stop right there, because I'm about to destroy your model. Not physically, of course, that would be mean, especially in front of your son. Let's look at that screenshot where you said specifically you would be seeing a half moon, where you are in Phuket. Now, 
Okay, you may see a half moon if that was the case, but a person here near the North Pole would be seeing a full moon, would they not? This means that in your model here, you're explaining different phases of the moon at different locations on Earth. And of course, in reality, this doesn't happen. And that, of course, is an absolute killer blow for you, Phuket word. So we'll leave it there for today, safe in the knowledge that you've been thoroughly trounced. So that's it. We're all done for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching. It really is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, then please do consider hitting that subscribe button. We're on a race to half a million. And if you really enjoyed it, then hit the like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Babbel for sponsoring today. Remember, if you click the link in the description, you will get 65% off a subscription. And of course, they now have the 20 day money back guarantee. I have been Simon Dan, have yourselves a cracking weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for the return of Jake the Arsehole, but he's not talking about Flat Earth. See you then.